So Matt. Yes. Have you heard of a little something called lucky girl syndrome? Uh, that was that thing on TikTok and there was like a song. It's like, I'm a lucky girl, I'm a lucky girl. <laughs> Lucky girl syndrome. Lucky girl syndrome. Lucky girl syndrome. This is lucky girl syndrome. Oh, really? I need to. Lucky girl syndrome. Lucky girl syndrome. Matt's right. Lucky girl syndrome was a thing on TikTok. You can look at Lucky Girl as Gen Z's rebranding of something called the Law of Attraction, also commonly referred to as manifestation. The idea that you can use positive mindset techniques, such as affirmations, to attract positive outcomes into your life, almost through some sort of universal force of nature. Now, this concept isn't new. Humans have been toying with the idea of the power of thought for centuries. But the actual term law of attraction didn't come into play until the late 1800s, when it was coined by Russian mystic Helena Blavatsky. And since then, it's popped up again, and again, and again, and again, definitely again. Now maybe you've said an affirmation or two, dabbled in vision boards here and there, but have you ever actually committed? Like truly stayed consistent with a clear mindset shift? And what would happen if you did? I was thinking mm -hmm. that we could do like a full-fledged, no-brainers experiment. Scheduled affirmations, oh, written affirmations. Okay. We're gonna be delusionally happy. Manifestation, lucky girl syndrome, Olympics. This is like a positivity marathon. Like we are like going okay. positive cult. Okay. No, not a no, cult. No, we are going not positive cult. cults. We're going positive cults. <laughs> this is an indoctrination video. <laughs> Hear me out. Two is better than one. But what is better than two? Four. Four to eight. Four to eight. We're going to pitch this to the no-brainers team and see Stop. who we can get on board. Stop. Via PowerPoint. Oh. Yes. Sweatsuits. Sweatbands. Sweatsuits. Sweatsuits. Eye of the tiger. This is good. Sit back, get ready for Positivity Nation. You're gonna change your life. We're gonna change your life. I'm scared. <laughs> be scared. You're gonna be triggering people. This is a story about a girl named Lucky. Everything, Everything always works out, out for us. Three days later. The plan would go as follows. Step one, come up with some positive affirmations to live by. Step two, get the entire No Brainers team on board, which shouldn't be that hard once you convince them that this is about to be the luckiest week of their entire lives. Step three, everyone gets a lucky girl booklet to keep them on track and some subtle reminders to keep the positivity extra high. The challenge? seven days straight of consistent affirmations and a positive mindset. Spoken affirmations three times a day, written affirmations twice a day, two daily gratitude check-ins, and a counteractive practice of replacing each negative thought with three positive ones. Yeah, we know, Positivity Boot Camp is dense. It wasn't gonna be easy, but I mean, who doesn't wanna feel like the luckiest person in the world? Now, we know what you're thinking. Manifest my There may be no scientific evidence to prove the law of attraction, but there is evidence to suggest that affirmations can actually work. The self-affirmation theory was pioneered by Claude Steele in 1988. As humans, we are motivated to maintain a positive self-image. Though in our day-to-day -day lives, we're consistently faced with threats to our self-esteem. Like your soccer team lost the big game, or you failed that math test. Well, it turns out we're actually able to respond to these threats in certain parts of our lives by affirming ourselves in another. For example, your soccer team lost. You feel like you're not very good at soccer. By using a self-affirmation about something else in your life that's going well, like 
I'm a great friend. I'm always there for the people that I love. That feeling of adequacy that you're focusing on can translate into other areas of your life. And suddenly, you don't feel so threatened by that big loss. Instead, you feel capable of overcoming it, learning from it, growing, and getting even better at soccer. Look at it this way. When we're focused on something negative or otherwise threatening, we tend to zone in on it and put the blinders on, which is actually a survival technique. On the contrary, self-affirmations help us to zoom out and get a wider perspective on a situation, making threats seem less threatening. In one study, non-affirmed participants saw tarantula as physically closer than it actually was, as opposed to self-affirmed individuals who were more likely to estimate the actual distance of the spider. Okay, so self-affirmations can help, but how? Well, through MRI brain imaging, neuroscientists have found that self-affirmations actually activate specific parts of our brains associated with reward. And even more interesting, the imaging showed that these neural pathways were most active when the affirmations were focused on the future rather than the past. Okay, so all this to say, Early we went for it. Seven days of all-in positivity, and we were off to a solid start. Jess, what just happened? I said I was really gonna enjoy my coffee, and then they messed up my order, so I got two coffees. That is an affirmation working real time, people. That's positivity in practice. Everything always works out for us. All right, back to work. Seven days of reflections, gratitude, and relentless affirmations. So, how did it go? Spoiler alert, none of us won the lottery. But we did have some pretty major breakthroughs. How was your lucky girl week? I think I was more aware of the positives, even if there were things that were happening that were negative. And I only filled out half my book. They served as reminders. I was never given a lucky girl brochure. And, uh, and therefore, didn't do any of the lucky girl requirements. Last week, I asked for an extension on my internship, wrote down my, that booklet over and over again, and then this week, uh, they gave me my extension. I actually was having a bit of a negative week, just not a great week, and I found that because of that, I was less motivated to do the practices that we were gonna try. So, to say that life is always flowers and rainbows and happy-go-lucky vibes is just not true. Part of the problem with Lucky Girl is that it borders that line of toxic positivity. It's a good thing to know how to return to that feeling of gratitude, but giving ourselves space to recognize our very real emotions is key to our growth. It's kind of eye-opening. I started to realize that like my most common saying to myself was, I hate myself. Oh my gosh. Like I'm so mean to myself to switch the way that I was talking to myself. I felt so good after this week. I started like developing these affirmations that really meant something to me. One feeling I noticed coming up so much more was the feeling of hopefulness as opposed to worried. So the time period where we shot this was actually during Pride. So I decided to use this experiment to manifest the pride of my dreams. I actually did. <laughs> it was so joyful. It was jam-packed. It was moment to moment to moment of just bliss. And I think a lot of that possibly could have been from saying affirmations and visualizing the experience I wanted to have. You start to notice the little things in your life that make you happy. That could bring me joy. I'm grateful I have this. Yeah, I would say I'm a really lucky girl. <laughs> Okay, great, that's all. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> hey guys, let us know in the comments below, have you ever tried out affirmations for yourself? And if so, how did it go for you?